Hey guys, this is James from TDB, and we are joined here again by Meet, who is fresh off from Europe. Is that right? That's right. Hey, yeah. everyone. Yeah. How were your travels? Good, sir. Uh, the travels were great. And I had a good time. Well, there and you have it. Yeah. Where, and where, I came where did back you go in Europe? Trump being president. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, let's talk about nicer things. <laughs> All right, so we have the White Tea Club, as you can tell by Meat being here. And so yeah. I think this tea was named after you, Meat. It's called no the, way. the Hot and Heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you are the direct inspiration for the this hot tea. Hot and Heavy. Yeah. I see. Uh, so let's take a quick smell of this. Yeah. And Meat is the wooey guy. I've had this tea club here for... A little over a month, so I've been waiting for him to try this. I have not tried this yet. Oh my so. god, this smells fantastic. It, it really smells quite amazing. Wow. Alright, so this is a Wooly Oolong, a Yan Cha Tea uh, from the Wooly Mountain. So uh, mm -hmm. we have our first infusion right in front of us, ready to go. So yeah. uh, cheers. Cheers. How is it? It's it's really good. It's very very subtle, very light. Yeah, I would, actually. Yeah, you know, like compared to the smell, I mean, it has the it has the elements that I would expect, but it's surprisingly light. Yeah, I I think so. I think for these next infusions, this one also looks a little bit light, so maybe pushing it a little bit more, extending that steep time for mm -hmm. just a second. Um, I think it has a nice smooth texture to it, um, mm -hmm. sort of like a silky, rocky texture. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, does this taste like a rock tea to you, a wooey tea? Yeah, but, um, you know, like if... I, I, no, it's, it's fairly obvious that it's a rock tea. I'm just thinking, like, it's so subtle, and, but it's, it's great. I'm just... It's really worth just soaking it in, you know, mm -hmm. taking your time and um, um, just going through it slowly. And uh, this tea uh, is one of the new white tea wuyi oolongs. I believe it's a 2016 harvest, so the roast isn't too strong. Getting a little bit of a stronger color here, so nice. uh, orangish red. But even that doesn't look as strong as I would expect. Let's take another smell of this. I personally, I don't prefer extremely strong roasted movies, so I like that fact about this. And then it, I mean, it just translate re translates really well. Right. You like wooies that either have been lighter roasted, mm -hmm. uh, like some of those Yunnan sourcing ones, or medium and then rested for a number of years. Yeah. Like yeah, the that's true. 2005 one that you have a few kilos of, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Kilos, yes. <laughs> That's an interesting word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, like, FBI alert just triggered somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump's not our president yet. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Fusion number two. Mm. Or, sorry, three and four, right? This is two. Two. Okay. Yeah, two. So, a sweet taste. Um, mm. It kind of reminds me of uh, some roadways in the sense that it's very aromatic. Mm -hmm. um, it's not doesn't remind me as much of some of the roastier like shui xians mm -hmm. that i've had it's not quite as strong or as as dense as those teas mm -hmm. it's more light um at least the way that we're brewing it here yeah i think i agree like it when you just when you said rogue that totally that totally just you know reminded me that yeah that's that's absolutely true um even the sweetness is so subtle and yeah there's there's absolutely no bitter, bitterness. no bitterness at all. That's that's a good thing for you. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I like that about teas. Um, um, my God, I could drink this. Just, I just keep drinking this. Okay, well, we are going to do this one, and I want to see what this tea does if we push it even just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to steep this for maybe twenty seconds. I wanted to smell the oh. 
the this the cha hai a cha hai sorry you are super light but very sweet again yeah and I mean looking at the guy one it doesn't even look like we're using that few of leaves the leaves take up pretty much the entire guy one so uh, yeah. it doesn't look uh, to be an egregiously low amount of leaves but we're gonna let that sit for a mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. What do you think about the tea? I mean, would this bring you to drinking Wooly teas more often than you normally do? Uh, verdict's still out for me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, I wish the tea were a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and part of that could be just how we're brewing it. Maybe I should have just simply used a little bit more leaves. It's very easy and nice to drink. I think it would be a wonderful tea to serve to guests, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm still judging it, so okay. we'll see. It's, it's like you said, there's zero bitterness in this yeah. right now, so it's yeah. really friendly. Mm -hmm. Leaves a really nice, sweet taste on the mouth, so mm -hmm. and it's got a great aroma. So, mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, speaking of the aroma, we will have another sip. So the aroma is changing quite a bit. It's changed more from those really mm -hmm. rich flavors to more of those uh, minerals and florals that. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. starting to get a little bit floral. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Cheers. But the sure. sweetness is still there in the in the in the aroma. So yeah. Like that. yeah. Cheers. Cheers guys. It's pretty similar actually, even though we extended the steep time. Is this stronger to you or is this about the same? It it feels a little bit stronger. I feel like the sweetness is starting to disappear. Like that, that first two steepings, the, the sweetness was just very obvious, even though very light. And then it's just lighter still. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so we will uh, drink this last infusion, and then we'll be moving on to a tea that... I don't, I don't think this was named after you. Um, the <laughs> Dahong Pao, so the Big Red Road tea. I'm like the hot and heavy... Uh, in a, Mm -hmm. A more of a classic uh, Chinese uh, tea. All right. Yeah, we we tried some Dahong Pao while we were in Taiwan, right? And it was kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. One of the fancy shops. Yeah, it wasn't. You tried that uh, compared to the Shui Xian, right? Yeah. And, and you, I didn't quite like it. You like the Shui Xian better. Yeah. yeah, the Dahong Pao was stronger, I think, and mm -hmm. less sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways. Cheers, sir. Cheers. There is no bitterness to be found in this tea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kind of tastes like the aroma to me, a little bit more floral. Mm -hmm. um, some of that rock taste. You have anything to add, or should we move on to tea number two? Um, yeah, we can move on to tea number two. I think, I don't know why, but there's just very subtle flavors and I like that about tea hmm. this tea a lot so you um, think that maybe it would be a tea that that would be good to session again just to so you could sort of study those flavors and pick out on them a little bit more mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right well let's mm -hmm. move on to tea number two all right guys we are back for uh the part two of this episode so we have some uh Da Hong Pao here, mm -hmm. uh, also from this year. So I think, if I recall correctly, this is more of a traditionally crossed wooey tea rather than hot and heavy, which hot is a little heavy. bit more experimental. Um, so why don't we take a smell of that and tell me what you're getting off of that nose. <laughs> um, it, I mean, it smells, it smells very much like the traditional Da Hong Pao that I've, you know, the, the, different ones that yeah. I've smelled. So how would you so say it smells differently from the hot and heavy tea that we were just drinking? Um, it's stronger, as I would expect. But I I still like... I've always liked... Here's been my impression is what I, I like the smell of Da Hong Pao after it's, you know, after it's brewed. But when I actually drink the tea, I find the tea to be far too strong. Okay. So yeah. Da Hong Pao is normally not the tea that you drink that I go for yeah is this 
roastier or less roasty than the hot and heavy? I find it roastier. Okay. Like, I feel like this could sit a little bit longer, and then maybe it could get close to the the hot and heavy. Okay. But, so it'd I mean, be like a tea that maybe you'd wait for a couple of years before drinking. Uh, maybe. Well, maybe. Yeah, let's... It definitely yes, does smell more roastier, uh, more of that charcoal for sure, mm-hmm. in the aroma. Um, all right. It's got a decent amount of sweetness too, I think. It does, you yeah. know, so. So we're using the exact same ratio here, and yeah. let's get drinking. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It indeed is quite a bit stronger. Um, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it has that charcoal taste coming through pretty yeah. quickly. It is still quite quite more mellow than what I expected it to be, actually. Uh-huh. Bitter at all? Um, I'm not getting bitterness or sweetness, you know. Maybe a little bit bitter, but not, not a whole lot. Mm. Which is a good thing, actually. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There is, like, the charcoal, the roastiness just comes right through, though. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, you know, I agree. I agree for the most part. I think, whereas the other tea, it was sweet, and then it left sweet feelings on the mouth. Mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit different here. It's leaving um, a mouthfeel that lasts, and I think it's stronger than the previous tea, but it's not as definitively sweet, especially put into contrast with the hot and heavy. Mm-hmm. number two and like the hot and heavy why don't I push this for just a little bit for the next infusion sure the colors we should note that on both teas are great too actually pretty similar colors actually Mm -hmm. overall I haven't noticed that one is significantly darker than the other yeah I know um but just just that golden color is yeah 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 good clarity Yeah. yeah yeah um what what do you think of uh, so are both of these tea kind of um, something white two tea is trying out like are they you know processing these teas themselves or are they I don't like think so I think especially it's... getting some farmers to do this for them like <sighs> that so that I don't know. what interests me is like they've they've also been doing some interesting experimental stuff with um, core core right yeah. I think Coor tends to be more their bread and butter. I'm not really sure how connected he is to the individual farmers here. Maybe he is. I I don't know. Um, yeah. But I don't. I know it for Coor, he is traveling around the mountains and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We, Oolong's not sure. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. This this definitely feel. I, I mean, both of these tea, you know, for what they are, like I feel like they're definitely the cream of the crop of what I've had. So you do so enjoy far, them from yeah. at least online sources. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cheers. Cheers. This one bitter. I would... What? What did you say? Bitter. But go ahead. More Sorry. bitter? Yeah. Yeah, it sort of does have that sort of chocolatey, mm-hmm. uh, stronger feel. I get maybe a touch of bitterness. A little bit more bitty, bitter than the hot and heavy, but it's not overly so. No, no, not at all. Yeah. But it did get a little bit stronger from compared to the previous infusion. It did, yes. Yeah. And we're going to do four again for this guy. So now I'm going to push this a little bit. The color should be noted that the color is a little bit darker. Darker here. Yeah, so right. we would expect that if any any infusion is a little bit too strong, uh, it would be this one. Yes. That's great. I haven't I haven't had I haven't had the traditional the loose leaf Chinese tea in a while actually. Mm-hmm. So I'm having a good time right now. Yeah. Which one which one would you say you prefer at this point? Um man, that's a tough question. I think I could I could do about, I'm about sixty forty with sixty being the hot and heavy, mm-hmm. and forty being the dahang pao. Like, just just because dahang pao is so well done compared to the other ones that I've had, that I would I would like to have it more often. 
than if it was any other Dahan Pao. So you said you're preferring the hot and heavy slightly. I am. Uh huh. But the Dahan Pao, like, like if you put any other Dahan Pao, then I would have almost okay. just almost always chosen the hot and heavy. Yeah. yeah. And so you are enjoying both teas then. I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. This this leaves a little bit more bitter taste in the back of my mouth. It's definitely stronger. I think right now I'm leaning towards preferring the Dahan Pao for me, at least. I also agree with your original assessment that, you know, I might wait for another year to try this. Mm -hmm. The roast isn't, like, it's very drinkable still, but it would be nice to uh, let it it wear off for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cheers, guys. Cheers. The strong infusion. It's stronger, um, mm-hmm. for sure. Definitely some bitterness. And, like, the immediate lingering feeling in the mouth isn't sweetness. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I guess, I mean, like, it has been gradually getting bitter. Yeah. Uh, starting, I mean, the first one was pretty good. The second one was still quite good. I mean, it wasn't at extremely bitter. Yeah. And the third one, as you'd expect, it's the most bitter and it's pretty obvious yeah and this infusion was even a, a touch tart uh, like even bordering on sourness just a little bit that's true yeah uh, interesting I can see I can almost see why you would prefer this a little more I just think it's a little bit more interesting of a tea, just just in its strength. Mm-hmm. Like if I had any complaint about the hot and heavy, it was that it's uh, too subtle. It's a little bit too light. Um, like if I were to serve it for, I, I which I think makes it actually perfect for a newer drinker, mm-hmm. um, or if you're serving it to someone's mom or something like that. Uh, well, I, maybe I shouldn't stereotype everyone's mom like that, but <laughs> I'm sure someone has a mom that likes super heavy, smoky drinks too. There you go. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Stronger, <laughs> stronger, and stronger and stronger. Mhm, mhm. It hasn't. It hasn't hit. You know that floral notes that yeah. we were getting in the previous tea. Mm-hmm. By this point, like it's just gotten stronger and bitter. Yeah, more notes. more mineral notes. This definitely more bitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you were to pick infusions for this Da Hong Pao, I'm guessing you would choose the first and the second one over the third and the fourth. Personally, I would because mm-hmm. that's my preference. But for a change, I I, I mean, it's a predictable progression, mm-hmm. and yet. A good one, mm-hmm. you know. And like, you you are continuing to find these teas to be pretty different from one another, right? The Da Hong Pao and the Han Heavy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you can tell them apart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, all right, so last question. Um, so the Hot and Heavy is selling for $15 for 50 grams, and the Da Hong Pao is $20 for 50 grams. So mm. price master meat. Oh, God. Is it, is, are those, um, what, what what do you say about those? They're, are are they worth the buy? Are they worth the recommendation? They're both. Everyone is watching you. They're both like more expensive than how much I I'd be willing to spend personally. Mm. That's just I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm, um, I don't know, um, but um, it's kind of tough. I would. Um, I think here's the thing like if you want a tea that you want like you're okay with bitterness and also lasts longer then I would go with the Da Hong Pao mm-hmm. and I I mean I can almost understand why it's a little bit more expensive than hot and heavy mm-hmm. in that sense it, um, it, it's good yeah um, I personally just like the hot and heavy better more mm-hmm. so I think I would I would have that uh, tea in moderation. It would be, it would be my sort of like a special occasion tea. Gotcha. So, yeah. so, so do you think the prices that are being charged are reasonable at the very least? For the Da Hong Pao, actually, I just based on my personal preference, I think it's more expensive. Mm-hmm. You know? But the hot and heavy, like just, 
I mean, I personally wouldn't spend that much on the Hong Pao. So, like, somebody who drinks the Hong Pao all the time might totally like it. It's a very good the Hong Pao. Mm-hmm. So, um, the light, the lighter, hot and heavy, I would, yeah, I would, I would get some of that. You yes. would be closer to considering that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, there you have it from. Price from master. Price <laughs> me. Uh, yeah. No, so, what, what do you think? What, do I mean? I guess the tough part is that you don't you don't drink. I I don't. So it's it's yeah. it's a trickier price evaluation mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think I would. I don't know. Uh, do you, they do both cross both me as these... decently reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you not? So, like, not not a steel, would... but reasonable. Right. Yeah. So these are both of these teas are, on on a you know, price basis. They're both on the more expensive side of what I get, generally. Right, right. So, um, you know, um, yeah, that's that's all. Yeah. But do you, do you not find Wuis to, or Wuis or in the, the Hong Pao's to be more expensive than poor in general? Depends on the poor, uh, but they're somewhere in the middle. Um, it would be... Uh, I guess poor does geez. have a pretty wide... Uh, poor has range. a very wide right, right range, so yeah, it would depend on the actual poor. Uh, but yeah, I think that just about concludes this in between. So thank you all for uh, tuning in, yeah. and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.